Hi everyone, I'm Noor Bashara from Upcycle Design School and Upcycle Design School is an educational platform that's dedicated to teaching and educating about upcycling, starting an upcycled brand, and we do this monthly workshop that's been working out really well and um, where we bring in a different guest every month. And we also offer a class about upcycling online on our site and the blog. And you can also follow us on YouTube at Upcycle Design School. And so I'm really excited this month to introduce you to Perrin Allen Edwards Demola. And he is the designer of his own upcycle brand called Perrin Allen. And so we know each other from when we were co-workers at Ellen Tracy years ago. And we recently reconnected because actually through social media, um, we realized that we're both in the upcycling world. And um, so I will let Perrin take it from here and um, do his own proper introduction. And thank you so much, Perrin, for, oh, yeah. uh, for being willing to participate in this workshop this month. Oh, yeah. No problem. I love it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like Nora said, my name is Perrin Allen Edwards Demola, and um, and I'm a fashion designer. Um, I uh, moved to New York back in 2008, and um, I've been working in like fabric research and development, product development, design at different places, and now I finally decided to just do my own thing. Um, taking the inspiration that I find all over the place. Like that's one of the biggest things that I learned that I really connected with as, as far as like going to school and learning about design is inspiration because like everybody loves certain things. And for me, inspiration is just like all around us. And so when it comes to like sustainability and upcycling, there's like so many possibilities. There's like so many things that you could do. It's like countless. And so adding that mix into the design world of uh, upcycling and in doing things with like high concept, like what we would learn in school, like using inspiration to bring a new approach to upcycle uh, products is just like phenomenal. It's like, it's one of my favorite things to do. I wake up in the morning and I, I sometimes if I can't sleep, <laughs> I get up and I just start sketching because I have an idea for something new. So, so that's me. <laughs> so, yeah. So shall I proceed with my presentation? Sure. <laughs> All right, cool beans. All right, I'm going to share my screen. So here we are. Can everybody see? Sweet. Perrin Allen presents Upcycling with High Concept Design. <laughs> Today, we will cover using found materials to upcycle with garments and or fabric, researching market trends, whether it's WWD, business of fashion, social media, fashion shows, we can all get inspiration from those places. Artistic inspiration, using art and design books and going to museums and galleries to gather inspiration. Execution method, balancing sustainability, cons consumer value and cost. Design development projects. I will cover two projects that I've worked on um, and con consistently brought them into my collections. So found materials upcycling with garments and or fabric. So I love finding new things. I go thrift shopping almost every other day <laughs> or especially over the weekend. And so what I had here is like a concept that I came up with a, a couple of uh, years ago, like combining a blazer and a sweatshirt hoodie. And then what I wanted to do, since this blazer was a Burberry blazer, I wanted to like tie in a bit more of that Burberry aspect to it. And so I found this isn't the exact shirt at all, but I, this is the blazer, but this is the uh, a, a shirt from the internet that I found. And uh, what I did was I used the shirt to create ties for the uh, the actual drawstring of the um, 
of the of the sweatshirt hoodie combo. So if you can look there, you can see the ties are on bias. And I used a, just a regular button down shirt. I believe it was Ralph Lauren with plaid. And it's similar. It was very similar to the, the Burberry plaid that you see. And then also the biggest component, most exciting thing is adding the hood to the blazer and then adding the uh, the sleeves there as well. And so now you have like this interesting combo thing and you can wear it in the summer or you can wear it in the fall. I had it in my a recent fashion show where um, the model was wearing it with a tank top. So very cool. Another idea for found materials, I go shopping for fabric quite often. I found this really great uh, fabric here. I call it the Finch, Dancing Finch print. I found it at Mood and um, I bought enough so that I could make a couple of jumpsuits and other things with. And another thing I combined with this particular item is that I found a linen handkerchief that kind of matched the same green in that print. And so I turned that linen handkerchief into a patch pocket on the jumpsuit. And at the end there, you can see the jumpsuit. And that's just a recent picture from my one of the fashion show that I recently did on Saturday. And then next we have researching market trends. So as a designer, we do a lot of things as far as like gathering inspiration. So I say work like a designer when you're thinking about your upcycling projects, do your research, find references and make it your own. And so I love to reference like um, WW, um, w, uh, WWD, uh, Vogue.com for like pa past shows from like different designers, my favorite designer, uh, right now is Dries Van Noten. And so I, I find lots of inspiration from him. And so this is kind of like tying back into the, the um, one of the items that I'm gonna be talking about later in my presentation here, but graphic print is all over the place. Even back into 20, 2019, it, it was a thing and still now is. And so I felt like it was really relevant even now. And then the patchwork trend is still going on full swing. And so I added a patchwork uh, item here which also ties back into something I will be sharing with, sharing with you later in my presentation. And then a bowl applique, um, all this top applying interesting um, bowl things like flowers, whether it's flowers, patchworks of like fabric, all really interesting and just eye catching, beautiful stuff that I love to do. And then artistic inspiration. I go to a lot of museums. There's like the Met is here in New York. And then I recently went to the Barnes Foundation in Philly. And I was able to see some of the, uh, the Matisse cutouts. This one in the center here, the dance by Henry Matisse is like a big uh, mural that they have in the museum. They're very inspirational. Very, again, very bold, very graphic on trend for right now. And also uh, I like to, tie my heritage into the things that I create. So I recently uh, went back home to Mississippi and um, at the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss, they had a quilt exhibition up. And so I took a couple of pictures as like references for inspiration, ways that I could tie that back into like other things that I'm working on. Just images of inspiration that I, I just collect and gather. I, I have tons of photos in my phone, so it's all a lot of things. And so, Execution and method. So balancing sustainability with customer value and costs. So many of you don't know this, but I work and I sell some of my products, my upcycle designs at Port Authority. There's a, a boutique called Art to Wear there. And so in that boutique, we, uh, the founder, Leslie Ware, she's great. Um, she has this uh, a partnership with Newly. Newly does this kind of a thing where they uh, kind of like with like with rent the runway, they rent out certain items to people, and you can have this like a membership, like as in rent the runway. And so, what happens is, when those things go out of circulation, they won't, don't want to like throw them out, but they offer them to like other people who want to do upcycling and do new things with them. And so, we had the opportunity to get these really great outerwear pieces in, and so. We wanted to like make sure that they hit the stores and sell as soon as possible. And instead of like upcycling in a degree of like taking the coat apart and like adding a new sleeve and new buttons and all this, I decided just to like 
do something really quick and fast. And I did some appliques at the shoulder on this beautiful blue clay outerwear trench coat here. And then on the opposite one, the what I'm calling pistachio, I added patchwork patches, which was just like fabric that was uh, discarded from like fabric headers. No one wanted it. And so I changed it up and uh, ap just applied those onto the, the actual coat there. And so it gave it like a quick update without breaking the bank. So it was just like a really fast and easy up cycle project to do and to get the items into the store. Because we, so, we got this, the items right in February. And here in New York, it's still a little chilly. And so we wanted to like hurry and get them out in the store so that people could see them and still wear them. Uh, beautiful colors and very on trend. So we really wanted to just like make those happen. So this just shows that you don't have to like go nuts trying to like change the sleeve or update it with like too many different things. Sometimes it's just simple as just adding an applique and it shows the customer an aesthetic appeal and it gives them something that's like beautiful and it and it just provides a bit more aesthetic value to the customer. And, and again, we didn't have to break the bank to make this happen. All we had to do was just top, all I did was top apply the, uh, these items onto the coat and they were beautiful pieces. And we had like one left in the store out of, um, out of five. So onto the concepts that I've created for myself as a designer. So I love Japanese art. And so this dates back from, I came up with this concept back in college, back in Mississippi State University. I took a graphic design class and um, I just got gathered inspiration with love by things that I love. And so I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to just find art that you love and allow it to inspire you. So I was very intrigued by the idea of like koi fish and fishes swimming through water. And um, it was just really beautiful to me. And so I thought about it and I wanted to make it something of my own instead of just like doing exactly what you see here, I wanted to make it something more graphic and interesting and perhaps something that I could like implement in several ways. And so this is my koi fish design. It started back in college and I've been using it ever since. And so what I have done and found that the, the best way to do this is to get this digitally printed. And so it's the most sustainable way I feel um, to get things done because like it reduces inventory waste um, with the ability to, you can have the ability to, to print on demand. You can print what you need. You don't have to print like yards and yards of, uh, of this particular thing. Um, say for instance, you work um, with like uh, a print service here in the city, there's like several and uh, they have a minimum. You have to print at least 30 yards. I don't need 30 yards of this print. I just want a couple of fishes. Uh, so I just, so what I did was I contacted people like at Contrado and you could, that's an online service where you can go online, you can develop your own print and you can upload it in the, and you can print it on like cotton twill, you can print it on silks, satin, and then also another step further one can do is services like Printful is where you can make your own graphic tees. So I could take this image and just like manipulate it and change it to just be a print on a t-shirt. And then also, like I said, Style Council and here in the city, they have a uh, capability to print uh, on demand for you. It's a little expensive. And also there's certain limitations with them. I think everything that they print has to be uh, polyester in order for you to like really use it. Otherwise, um, if you print on certain types of, um, of fabrics, the print sometimes bleeds once you start washing it and using it normally. So it's best for like showroom samples, just something quick to have so that you can present your collection. Oh, and here is how I implement it into like my design. So basically I had those printed really big and then I top applied those appliques onto like button down uh, dress shirts that were already made that I found at thrift shops. So yeah, so it's just like an interesting, bold, punchy, something interesting and fun. And it just works really well. I am now also like printing yardage to do a smaller fish so that I can do like cut and sewn pieces, like making my shirts from scratch. 
so that's another way to, to implement the design. Oh, and this is mostly, I decided to turn, combine to make one dress. And so the koi fish, you can't really tell in this image, but the koi fish tail is coming from her pocket, chest pocket, and then it wraps around her body from left to right. Another idea, uh, design development that I've done, this is based upon like the memories of my grandmother back home in Mississippi. She would like collect a lot of like swatches and things to put together to make quilts. And so I got to thinking about that. Like, I think my mama Ruth was onto something because I thought about it more. I looked at like paintings and things when I go to like the different museums and even like in books back when I was in college, I saw uh, Mondrian was very similar to quilts. And so I was like, hmm, interesting. So I put two and two together. And I thought about how I think with leftover scraps that my grandmother had. And I thought like, what can I do? And so there's like so many ways, so many things, avenues out there in, in like the garment district. And so I have friends who have like fabric mills and and they work in these different places where they have like leftover headers. So I took headers in a similar type of jersey weight, combined those jerseys and made like a, a quilt situation. You can tell here in this image. So different swatches from discarded fabric headers. And I pinned those all together, sewed them, and I came up with, so this is also the concept, sorry, concept of the sketch I was going for. And so it's just like adding those and coming up with this patchwork tank dress. And so 100% sustainable. Everything was going to be tossed in the garbage. And I was like, well, I could do the same kind of thing that Mondrian did and my mama Ruth and add this concept to one of my designs. So there you have it. It's just like, all this is just like discarded fabric. They just, I just made sure that they were the same kind of fabric weight and um, the same kind of stretch. And so it came together pretty well. So doing design research can inform your design. Explore everything, everywhere. Keep your eyes open. Art references can spark ideas you may never even imagine. Do not be afraid to combine found materials and garments to make a new concept. As a precaution, I do suggest like, be sure you pre-wash your fabric just in case to remove like excess dye or any shrinkage when you find these items sometimes. Sometimes, like especially from like a fabric header, you never know what, what the fabric has been through. It may not, have, the color may not have, have like uh, been fast. And so you wanna make sure you wash that a little bit and also to get rid of any sh shrinkage. Um, and then also add a personal touch to your upcycling by connecting it to things that matter to you. So like in my case, it was my grandmother and then also like my appreciation for the art of uh, the Japanese, Japanese art wood uh, block making. And so things like that, just like find something that speaks to you to tell your story and to speak the narrative. Start new conversations with inspiration as your guide and work like a, no, work like a designer. Do your research, find references and make it your own. That's me. <laughs> okay. Do we have a few questions? Fabric headers? So fabric headers. So yeah, so I work with a lot of like, um, oh, sorry, Nora, do you wanna moderate or how should I? Is no, no, it okay? no, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. I was unmuting <laughs> myself in case I, I was going to um, oh, okay. help you with the uh, chat. You got it. So fabric headers. Let's see. Do I have some? So I have a, a box full, actually. Um, one of my fabric friends out of Italy, they actually shipped me a bunch of them so that I could start working on ideas for the coming um, fall. So basically those fabrics that you saw that I connected, they had like these little, it, so a fabric header is just basically information about that particular fabric coming from a fabric meal. So 
if you work in like um if you design for yourself or you work in like a corporate environment so there's like a fabric team it would get these like representations of the fabric from um by request from the design team and they would get like all these from like whatever meal and so on the fabric header you would have like the the, the name of the fabric meal the content which is really cool I, I love looking at fabric headers just to get like even like inspiration just from like reading like what kind of wool is this how what, what kind of finish does it have and so so yeah so basically the fabric headers that I got had all these like paper things on them and what I did was I removed them and uh, also there's it was a kind of tedious to take all those apart, but it was okay. It was well worth it. And uh, so I made sure to recycle the paper, of course, and then I connected them to make the the the, um, the tank dress. Thank you. So these, you got it. <laughs> these headers are usually thrown out by large companies. Yeah, so. they're, yeah they're normally thrown out. And so how... And, and um, my friend, uh, Baha, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think they glitched Go ahead, a little Nora, bit. I'm sorry. Um, no, yeah. I was okay. going to say, how do you advise other designers to get their hands on some of these headers that would have been thrown out? Oh, so I would reach out to maybe even like design uh, designers, like even like um, maybe like Vera Wang, people like that. They get rid of these all the time. And then that's like, and then there's like other fabric companies too. So I know a couple. Um, I would probably just maybe Google it and I could like also link some people here too. Like I can, uh, I can come back and like, if people really want to like reach out to these people, cause the thing is like, they would love somebody to come pick this stuff up. <laughs> uh, if, if you're like in the city, um, in New York, especially like my friend Baja at Scarlet Finch, he says like, parent come by with a suitcase anytime. Um, they just want to get rid of it. Cause at the end of the day, they just throw it out and they feel horrible for doing it. It goes into landfills and it just makes our city, our earth worse, worse off. So I can connect with more people. And um, I know for sure at Scarlet Finch, Baja would be really pleased if people were interested in collecting some leftover headers. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, Great. We have a question from Brooks. Um, how do you determine the retail price of each piece? Which this is a great question. Uh, ah, sweet. So I like to think about it. So I think about it as far as the hours that I put into it. <laughs> and then um, I also think about how much I would have been paid if I was like designing for a corporate company. Say, for instance, I was like making, I don't know, 80k or something and so i just like break that down like the hourly rate and kind of like figure that out like how long it took me and then also i think about like the value the percept the perceived value of the item too like what would the customer and then you have to think about like the area where you're selling it like i i have to think about my area because i sell at two places here in brooklyn i sell at um a, a local shop called grand rue and so not many people really want to like spend a ton of money. And so I really have to be gentle about the cost that I put into stuff as well as how much I'm asking. So basically um, it's determining like the hours that I put in the materials. And um, if it's like high-end fabric, uh, fabric that's really special, I increase the, I bump it up just a little bit just so that people know that they're getting quality. And if I'm there in the store to explain to the, the salesperson too, it's always helpful and beneficial. Interesting. So you just, you basically base it on your hours as if you were getting paid in the corporate fashion world kind of thing. Yeah. Not, not so much mm -hmm. as if, Pretty much. if you were going to hire someone to make the piece. That's a, that's an interesting, um, angle on how to price pieces because right. there there are no, there's no right or wrong <laughs> yeah so right right and i i, kinda, I try to like want to try to make it like fair to myself too as well because it's like this is my idea and i spent time to do it and especially if i love something i feel like it's special um it works out into my in my favor sometimes i did a 
for example, I did a really interesting coat. It was an old fit garment that they discarded at my old company and it had no sleeve. <laughs> it was a coat and it had no sleeve. And I think the um, a pocket was missing. And so basically I needed to like fix the sleeve and add a new pocket. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. And so I just like, I, it was like very mixed matched. It had like a solid um, melt and wool body and then one sleeve raglan sleeve was like houndstooth <laughs> and then i did a patch pocket in like a multicolor situation and then inside of it was like a, a leopard lining and so i priced that at 795 for my holiday pop-up for an outerwear piece that's pretty decent i think and um had it there in my pop-up over the holidays and then one day right before christmas a young lady popped in with a friend she's like oh my god i love this coat and she had to have it and didn't argue with the price at all. <laughs> it was novelty enough. And she felt the, that, that the, the value was there. And it also, she was just, I guess, supporting the community. So, which was also great. <laughs> wow, yeah. When you're able to reach the customer on that emotional level where they have, just yeah, have to have it, yeah. they, then sometimes right. the price doesn't matter as much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's true. Cool. Um, so, do you have any advice for college graduates going out into the field who are interested in sustainable fashion? Yeah, so I say find a great internship, find a mentor. <laughs> um, I feel like that's like one of the biggest thing, like talking to people, getting to know people, working with them. I mean, we would all love to get paid internships. That would be great. But sometimes you're, it's going to be hard. Um, but if you do find a paid internship, fantastic. But in the meantime, while you're looking for that paid internship, I would say, I would say, find a mentor, uh, talk to some people, go out and about talking to folks, um, pop into like some stores, see what they do. Um, and then just continue to just like, create that narrative for yourself, like find things that inspire you. Like I would, so what I, when I moved to New York, I, uh, I took it upon myself to like go to all the different places where I wanted to, to work at, like Carolina Herrera. I actually ran into her one day and gave her my business card. So you never know. Um, and so just like going to places and just like hit the ground running, you just, just have to do it. Um, yeah, and then if you really want to like start doing sustainable stuff, I feel like just going and then also maybe like connecting with like the different fabric mills, like I said, talking to those people and sometimes those people connect you to jobs. Um, right now, my friend Baja, he's introduced me to like so many people like a Veronica Beard, where they would like need somebody to do because I, I do have a fabric research and development uh, background. They were recently recently looking for like a fabric manager. And so I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to do more creative stuff if I had to go back into a corporate. So like, I feel like just creating that network of like talking to people, going out to like, if there's like an event, um, like an event where you can like connect with more fashion industry people. I mean, if you're at the school of like Parsons Design School and FIT, I feel like all, a lot of opportunities occur with like, if you just have to like, I don't know, sometimes I find it too. Um, I know for myself, I was very shy when I was in school, still am a little bit, but I feel like if you start talking to people, just like getting yourself out there more and just like making those connections, things start to happen. And also to say, you know, there's a lot of events that ha are happening in the city that are about around sustainability. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, there was yes. Green Fashion Week. And so there were right, talks right, right. and events um, circled around that. There was a nonprofit called Remake that had their own event, mm -hmm. um, the Vintage uh, Fabric Show or the Vintage Fashion Show, I think uh, is what it's called. Um, so just going mm -hmm. to these events, showing up, talking to people like Perrin said yeah. and even going to fabric trade shows as well like um mm -hmm. European preview is one. yeah and then absolutely because I feel like making those connections with people who I don't know who get those headers <laughs> and they don't know what to do with them and just like saying that okay I, if I pay for shipping or maybe they have like a budget where they can just ship things to to people 
um, that's good too. And then you connect, you can connect with all those fabric people to see if you can start doing more sustainable things as well. Sometimes they'll give you like a five yards cuttings of stuff just because you never know. Yeah, they just might have leftover fabric in their office that mm -hmm. they don't need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so and it's then, just about, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Finish. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, just like connecting with other people. It, I know it sounds difficult in the beginning. It's just like, I mean, the way I got my internship, I, I just emailed hr at verawang.com back when I was back home in Mississippi. And um, it happened, you know, it's just, I don't know, you just have to try. <laughs> just You just have to show up. And that, that's the case for starting your own brand and trying to promote and sell your own pieces is just show up, go to events, go to places, meet people, right. talk about your passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like I could just talk about design and inspiration all day. And uh, I, I guess so. I so I'm, I do so. I sell uh, my products at Art to Wear uh, at Port Authority, and I also work there. And so I can get so caught up some days. I talk to like the commercial customers, and like, they they just get so enamored with like the idea of like, oh, this is design, and you're such a great talker. And, and I it actually boosts my confidence too, just like practicing and talking to them because <laughs> I'm naturally quite shy. And so I feel so fulfilled just like talking to the customers and being there and just helping them try on new things, even if it's not my stuff, I don't care. I love just like seeing people happy and expressing themselves in the garments that we have there. Amazing. And that kind of leads into our next question from Donna. Um, where exactly is the store in Port Authority? Oh, so it's right. So the entrance is right on 8th Avenue. And so it's right in front of like the New York Times building, uh, 8th Avenue. And it's, so it's between 40th and I think that's 41st right there. And so you walk in and then it's like you walk past like a couple of like Oh, there was once a Bolton's uh, store, and then there's going to be another store. Uh, so it's like Bolton's, a, an empty store, and then another store that's going to be coming soon. I think it's like a beer, some kind of beer store coming. But so past those two uh, stores, and then right on your right, you'll see art to wear. And it's right there in that big space. And so it's well lit. And we do mannequins in the display area. It's very inspirational. Um, and we, so we, there at art to where we, we celebrate not just um, my stuff, there's other designers there too. So there's like other designers called like, um, that, that do every, um, that do other sustainable practices as well. And so we, we, we represent like a bunch of designers in that one space. And, uh, and so, and it's really great. Um, so we also sell those items and um, yeah. <laughs> Cool. I, I have to go check it out. I actually have not been there. You yet. haven't been? No, no. no. It's oh, okay. on my list. Of, yeah, I'm, I'm normally there, there on Saturday. Saturday? Oh, I think we froze. I'm sorry, you're breaking up there. <laughs> sorry, I think we froze for a minute. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, I missed that. Nor yeah, um, I, I maybe my computers. <laughs> so, I, I think you were saying that you're going to be there on Saturday. Yep, I'll be there on Saturdays. <laughs> oh, cool. I'll have to um, try to stop by. Cool, cool. Cool. Um, and for anyone watching, if you're in New York and you're able to stop by at Art to Wear, Perrin is. You're usually there every Saturday. Um, pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So you guys can meet him in person <laughs> and check out his pieces. Um, and uh, so we, we have, have a que question. We have another question um, from Brooks. If not in New York, where they understand what you were doing, I wonder if sustainable repurposed pieces can be online because of the fit and touch feel and one of a kind pieces. And um, I guess the the seems like the question is how can you sell these kinds of pieces online if i'm interpreting this right and i guess Perrin, you could talk about how your experience with My experience. Yeah. selling <laughs> online has been 
Oh yeah. So as far as like my one of a kind pieces, I only sold one thing since I've been doing this online that's one of a kind. Um, and it was just like a basic sweatshirt body with like an applique on the uh, on the chest. And I feel like maybe that's an issue uh, because like some people really like you like you like the uh, like Brooke said, like people really want to touch that stuff. They want to fit it. They want to try it on. And so that's what happens a lot in our store at Art to Wear. Um, they love trying if you can convince people to try things on, they love to like put it on to make sure it, it works and how it feels. It's hard to like convince people uh, via the website. Yeah, and I, I feel like from my experience too, with my mm. pieces are pretty much mostly made out of repurposed denim. And it's not even that my pieces are one of a kind size wise, you just- right have to see it and touch it and being you in have person to see it, believe it. <laughs> um, yeah you you kind of have to experience it in person to really understand it um from my experience and from what i've seen the more expensive the piece is the harder it is to sell it online and mm. that's always been a challenge to try to keep the prices down but i've seen other designers put measurements online on the photo if it's a one of a kind piece. Gotcha. So the canvas is the one, right, Lord, that you work with yes. the canvas? Yeah. Cool. So the canvas is another similar type business model. And um they had their store on the Bowery and that they're um switching locations now. And I think that they have plans to open more than one in the future, which I'm like fingers crossed hoping that they will. But the the can it's the canvas.nyc is their website. Uh, I would recommend reaching out to them as well. And they have a variety of designers that sell sustainable and upcycled pieces. They also do a lot of events at the store as well. Cool. Yeah, we're trying to do more of that at Art Tour too. Like we are in plans of like doing more like having um maybe music events, uh dance parties, cocktail evening some things like that you know yeah. um and then maybe also in the future um there will be a fashion show <laughs> oh that sounds great yeah cool. so more to that more to come i i'm just going to tease it just a little bit because uh we, we have a lot to plan <laughs> yeah. So, yeah yeah and what and what we did recently at the canvas a group of upcycled designers and i we said um we're going to do an event uh, meet the designer event and oh, we promoted it helpful. through refashion week which was great because it really got us a bigger audience of people to attend we served wine and um you know it wasn't really um such a strong sales event but it was great to just meet people okay. and yeah so i find like working in the store meeting the customers and seeing them like get excited that that's that alone is, is an inspiration to me. Even if I don't sell anything that day, I convince them to try on this dress by I don't know, um, old baby, uh, which is one of the another designer that we present at uh, Art to Wear. I convinced them to try this on, and because they thought the color was great, and they saw it on themselves, and they got really happy and excited, and you just made somebody's day. <laughs> you know, I love that feeling. So. Uh. I could go on and on. Uh. Yeah, and and just the opportunity to meet people and kind of tell them about what you're doing and explain yeah, your concept and your process and why you mm -hmm. made this and have people look at your work and, and see and be like, oh, I get that. I get your inspiration. It's it's really yeah. fun. And speaking yeah. of that, meeting people, um, Eileen just put in the chat that um, we met at the Canvas recently. Um, mm -hmm. So that's very cool. Nice to see you here, Eileen. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so does anyone else have questions or comments before we wrap up? Um, I thought I had seen someone else with their hand up. But um, is, is Trey again? No, I think. Um, Trey had, uh, had already asked the question. Um, okay, 
So if nobody else has any questions or comments, um, then we are going to wrap up. Um, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. And Perrin, thank you so much yeah. for being <laughs> the guest on the workshop this month. Um, it's, oh, I always cool. learn so much and really get inspired by all of the guests that come on. And your presentation was also very inspiring. So. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I had a lovely time. <laughs> And the recording will be published next week. It'll be on the Upcycle Design School YouTube channel and on the blog at upcycledesignschool.com um, forward slash blog. So, um, and I will be sending out an email next week when it's published. So thank you guys so much and hope you guys have a great day and see you next month. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Bye. Bye.